Gotcha! This is Music For My Voice and this is how to sing the high notes with ease. Because I've had a question from one of my subscribers about laryngeal tilt, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is basically singing the higher notes. So, let's sing! tilt it's another buzz phrase doing the rounds with vocal coaches with warm-up exercises what exactly is it why are we so focused on it how can we get past it to actually make singing these high notes singing generally easier than what it potentially could be. So in this video, I'm first of all gonna talk about terminology, things like laryngeal tilt, and how it can maybe hinder more than help us. Then I'm gonna very, very briefly go over a little bit of biology. I am not a scientist, I'm a vocal coach. I know how things work. Do I know the actual full science? A little bit. But yeah, we're gonna talk about that very, very briefly. Then we're going to talk about why and how we can get stuck with hitting those high notes. It's not rocket science, but for some reason, a lot of us struggle. So we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do an amazing warm-up routine that is going to help you get those high notes. Get those high notes with ease. Yes, it's going to include laryngeal tilt and all sorts of other funky things to get you on up there. So first off, terminology. Why don't I love it? Because sometimes we can fixate so much on it that it actually hinders more than helps us. And fixating on, oh, how can I get laryngeal tilt? How can I do certain things? How can I get mixed? How can I get belt? How can I get vibrato? All fun things, but ultimately they are just labels on the way that we sing. And I'd much rather you focused on exercises, weird noises, certain feelings that are going to get you on those notes, get you on those vowel sounds, improve your singing, rather than obsessing over terminology. Terminology does not help everybody. And there are lots of different kinds of terminology in different vocal pedagogies pedagogy basically a way of teaching, a way of teaching the voice. I learned in the bel canto teaching, very, very traditional, that's where we talk about things like the mask, like pushing down and things. I It took me years, years to work out what the mask is. I actually thought it was wearing a physical mask at some point, but no, it's all about the feelings inside and very, very confusing to little old me learning to sing. Equally, I'm not a huge fan of other types of teaching, probably because I'm used to how I was taught, and I guess that's how we all are. We, we, we always revert back to the teachings of our youth. But yeah, I just don't, I just don't get on with, with, with things, with other ways. I, I much prefer to do weird exercises, to do weird sounds, to get the sound, to get the vocal production that I need for, for songs. And with my students, I do try to avoid terminology and, as I said, do these weird sounds because I find that through, through practice, through actually finding them, rather than obsessing over terminology, it helps much better makes them find their voices a lot quicker and a lot stronger than if they were to do it theoretically. So the science, what exactly is happening when we sing up high? Well, we know that we've got our vocal cords here in our vocal tract, here in the middle of our throat around about here. And the ultimate science of it all is that when we are speaking, they're all pretty, pretty neutral just vibrating, the vocal cords are just vibrating off each other like that. And then when we go higher, they're stretching and vibrating faster. And when we're low, they're not so stretched and they're vibrating slower. So I suppose the trouble that people find is because the vocal cords are stretching, they need to have the freedom to do it 
hence the laryngeal tilt because that's basically creating the space for them to stretch, for them to move freer, for the powerhouse to work, for everything to work, for those high notes to just be nice and easy. Simple, simple biology. It's just science. Singing is just science in the same way that we speak, we can sing. So why and how do we get stuck with our singing? Well, first of all, maybe we have a bit too much weight in our voice, in our vocal folds. As I said, for the lower notes, they're far more thick and the, and the air speed isn't flowing as fast. And when we speak, we're very, very chesty. So sometimes it's because we've got a bit too much weight. We're still pulling on them, keeping them chesty. When they want to stretch, they want to thin, they want to go into the head resonance. Don't be afraid of the head resonance. Head resonance has had a bit of a bad rep. It is good. Head resonance is needed. There is head resonance in a good belt, in a mixed belt. It is very, very rare, very, very rare for it to be all chesty, all weighty. And so many times I've seen it that people have kept their voices as chesty as possible because they see it as a strong sound. And then when they get to a certain point, they get stuck because it's just, there's too much weight. There's no room for the vocal cords to stretch nice and safely and, and smoothly, and then it gets stuck. And then of course, if you're there, that then brings in tension. If there's tension in your shoulders, tension in your neck, tension in the jaw, that again causes problems. So don't fixate on anything here. Keep this nice and smooth. A great trick is, to, is when you're doing your breathing exercises, breathing in, holding and breathing out and generally breathing during singing. Keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Grab a mirror, watch yourself singing, make sure there's nothing going on here. This is all chilled. All the work happens internally and also down in your powerhouse as well. So remove all tension. But the final thing that keeps us stuck, that causes issues with us singing high, is this, our brains and overthinking, overthinking those high notes. Maybe you read music, you're looking at the stave, you're looking at those notes that are above the stave and you're thinking, ah, that is so high, I am never ever going to reach that. You see it as a stumbling block, it's there. It's purely psychological, you can hit those notes. Like I said, it's just science. I prefer to think of a phrase Think of a tune, even if it goes really, really high, just as a nice, smooth, straight line. Don't think of going up and going down, just think of keeping it steady. Your brain is probably, yeah, your biggest enemy. I was going to say the tongue, because you know that I, I have issues with the tongue and it getting in the way, but no, it's your brain, it's all psychological, it's all a mental block. I can't sing that, that's too high. No, I can't, that's too high. That's, that's out of my range. Just practice, practice and your voice will grow. Your voice range will extend. There are certain limitations. Obviously, if we've got lower voices or if we've got higher voices, so lower voices can't go as high necessarily, higher voices can't go as low, but you can, you can sing a huge amount of notes and you can also change the key, change the key of the song. So, no, you are in control of your voice. You can do whatever you want to do with your voice. Don't listen to your thoughts. Thoughts are not facts. Okay, I think that's enough talking, don't you? Let's get down to some singing. So first of all, we're going to find our breath. As always, we're going to breathe in for five, we're going to hold for five, and we're going to breathe out for 15. Ready? Breathing in, two, three, four, five. Holding, two, three, four, five. And out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One more time. This slower speed. Breathing in two, three, four, five. Holding two, three, four, five, and out. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, we really need to get our tongue working to clear space at the back of our throat for those vocal cords to extend, to stretch nice and safely, nice and smoothly. So just stick your tongue out. Really stretch it. Not pretty, don't forget that singing is really not pretty. I'm just massaging my neck as well a bit. Nice and gently. You can stick the tongue out completely or tuck it behind your teeth and really stretch it. From the back, feel. Feel the full extent, the full size of your tongue muscle. It is massive. It goes all the way down your throat. So we just want to have it nice and forward, nice and stretched, nice and relaxed. And continuing on from the tongue stretches, we're going to do some arpeggios and we're going to do them to tongue trills, blowing raspberries. <laughs> I have done a video for how to do this. If you're unable to do it, you could do the lip bubble. You could do the puffer fish. You could do the straw. You could use the straw blowing bubbles into some water or just blowing through into the straw. You could just do a hum. That's absolutely fine. It's an SOVT exercise, a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. I'm doing the raspberries, doing the tongue trills because I really, really want to work my tongue for singing high, for making those high notes as easy as possible. So, arpeggios, as I said, high voices up here, low voices the octave below, I will play the piano, the octave below, and we're just going to do some lovely raspberries. Ready? And, everywhere it's so attractive but it's such a good exercise wow my tongue just feels incredible okay now we're going to do some sirens basically doing an impression of the emergency services of a fire engine of a police car of an ambulance whichever makes a sort of a really really annoying siren sound Woo! No right or wrong. You go woo, woo, 
just make a funky siren sound. Go crazy. Really, really do. Go to absolute town with this one. Woo! And now that we've done those sirens to get everything working here, we're going to do some slides up a third, up a fourth, and up a fifth. Again, just to a siren sound, so I'm doing it to a woo. So woo. High voices up here, low voices the octave below. Woo, ready? And woo. is nice and relaxed the sound is being thrown forward as if it is coming through this gap here in between my top lip and my nose Ooh, so sound traveling along my hard palate that is laryngeal tilt that is stretching the back here to get the sound higher think flat and think forward. Imagine that you've got this laser beam coming. Ooh, the higher you go, the forward and the flatter it becomes. Ready? And ooh, it's a very narrow, tight feeling here.
ways to get those high notes, to stretch it all out, as well as sirens, are doing cries and meows. Oh, puppy dog cries. Oh, 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 feel. You can kind of feel it. You feel your head can drop forward a little bit. That is tilting. That is the laryngeal tilt. Oh, Or you can do meow, 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 meow. Feel it, feel it. If anyone's listening to you warming up right now, they're gonna love it. They'll love hearing you do some funky, weird crying noises and some cat impressions. We need to do these ugly sounds to find the true beauty in our voice. Do not be afraid to do these strange sounds. They're going to grow your voice. They're going to help with your singing. And now we're going to musically cry with a five note scale. High voice is up here. Low voice is the octave below. We're going to just go, oh, oh, as if we're not upset, well, we're upset, but we're upset because we've just not got what we want. Maybe our brother, sister, friend has got a new toy or something and we're a bit jealous. Oh! <laughs> so it'll be like this. Oh, 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 oh. Ready? High voices, low voices. And Still very upset. Ready? And oh, 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 Keep 
the intensity. Oh, 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 oh,